Hi, my name's Alistair Chapman, and in this video, we're going to take a look at the RAW option for this camera, the Sony PXW FS5. Now, if you want to have RAW on the FS5 camera, first of all, you need to ensure that your firmware is up to date. You must be on at least firmware version 2. Then you have to purchase the RAW upgrade option from your video dealer. And what you get is a box like this, and inside this box there is a document containing a special code number. Then you go online onto a special Sony website, you enter that code number along with the serial number of the camera, and the website will generate a special key number that you enter into the camera to unlock the RAW option in the camera. It's a relatively straightforward process, it doesn't take very long, and you don't need to send the camera away, so you're never without your camera. So, next thing to look at is, what exactly is RAW? With conventional video recording, the video camera takes the signal that comes from the sensor and processes that with an internal processor, adding the final look of the image, or the log gamma curve, depending on the way we're shooting, and then that's recorded inside the camera or on an external recorder output as a conventional video signal over HDMI or HDSDI. But with RAW, what we do is we take that RAW data from the sensor, we bypass most of the image processing, and we output that signal in the case of the FS5 on the SDI connector so that the RAW sensor data can be recorded with an external recorder or processed by an external device. Because we're doing that image processing outside of the camera, it gives you a great deal of flexibility in post-production to create a wide range of different looks from the same footage, from the same content. Another benefit of RAW, especially with this camera, the PXW FS5, is that because we're outputting that sensor data to an external recorder, we can actually bypass many of the internal recording limitations of the camera. In UHD, the PXW FS5 can only record 8-bit 420. That's an internal limitation. But when we output in RAW, we're able to output 12-bit RAW sensor data, and that is higher quality than the internal recordings. So by using an external recorder, we can gain a higher quality image from this camera. A further limitation of the FS5 is that if you wish to shoot UHD, internally the camera can only generate two video streams. One of those streams is the stream that's going to be recorded, leaving just one stream available for either the viewfinder, the LCD, or an external monitor. When you use the RAW option, this is an additional stream that's added to the camera. So that means you can feed RAW out in 4K and record that externally as a 4K signal, and then internally you can still have an image in either the viewfinder or LCD, and at the same time you can record HD internally on the SD card. You can also record super slow motion RAW at 2K up to 240 frames per second continuously, if your external recorder supports this, as well as bursts of 4K super slow motion RAW using a burst recording mode. So as you can see, there are many benefits to having the RAW option in the camera. There's that ability to output RAW data to record it externally at higher quality than is possible internally, and the option to have an extra monitor external to the camera while still retaining the viewfinder picture. But there are some important things you need to understand about RAW. Internally, in UHD, the camera records at 100 megabits per second, making some nice, small and compact files. RAW recordings in 4K are going to be around 3 gigabits per second, with the majority of the RAW recorders available today. But as an alternative, Many of the RAW recorders can take the RAW data stream and convert it to an alternative high-quality 10-bit codec, such as Apple's ProRes. This offers some of the quality benefits of starting with the RAW data, 
but with a much smaller file size, and that makes it more manageable. The raw output from the FS5 is 12-bit, and that is significantly better than the 8-bit recordings you get in UHD. But it must be understood that 12-bit raw is not as good as the 16-bit raw available from high-end cameras like Sony's PMW F5 or F55 when used with the R5 RAW recorder. 12-bit RAW will give you great grading flexibility in post-production, but it is very important with 12-bit RAW that you expose very carefully to get the most out of it. And RAW shouldn't be considered as a substitute for poor lighting, and it won't give you any improvement in the camera's low-light performance. There are many different external RAW recorders available from different manufacturers that will work with the FS5. In this video, I'm going to take a look at just two, and that's the Convergent Design Odyssey 7Q+, and I'm going to look at how we can record RAW with that, and the Atomos Shogun, and I'm going to have a look at how we can record ProRes with that. But please do your own research into which recorder is the right one for you, as this is a market that changes very quickly, and by the time you watch this video, there may be other options available to you. Now, when shooting with RAW, you should set the camera to picture profile number 7, which is S-Log2 with S-Gamut. This sets the camera to the correct gain level and sets the RAW output correctly so that the RAW recorder will be able to process it correctly. You will need to choose the appropriate white balance manually within the picture profile, depending on the scene that you're shooting. For exposure, Sony recommend that S-Log2 should be exposed with middle grey at 32% and white at 59%. I would consider these minimums. You definitely don't want to expose any darker than this, because if you do, your picture will be noisy and grainy. Ideally, you want to expose a little bit brighter than this. And I like to do exactly the same for RAW. I find that I get the best results by exposing about one to one and a half stops brighter than those Sony recommended minimums. The easiest way to do this is to use a white card or a white piece of paper and set the camera's zebras to 70% and then expose the shot so that the zebras are just starting to appear over that white piece of paper. Another way to do it is to use the EV offset function in the camera menu to add a plus 1.5 EV exposure offset. Then you can press the one push auto iris button or the auto ND button to gain an exposure that is one and a half stops brighter than the standard level for S-Log2. And that's going to give you a really good result in the vast majority of shooting situations. So let's have a look at exactly how we set the camera up to output RAW and record RAW using a Convergent Design Odyssey 7Q. So first of all, we need to make some changes in the camera's recording and output settings. Once you've enabled the camera's RAW output option, when you go to Rec Set, you'll see that there are now some extra options under File Format. In addition to the original options, you'll see that you now have an option for RAW and XAVC HD, and this option allows you to output RAW over the HDSDI and record XAVC HD internally onto the SDXC cards at the same time, or there is simply the RAW only option. It is of course worth remembering that once you've turned on the RAW output, any monitor plugged into the HDSDI output must be capable of decoding that raw data, otherwise you won't get a picture. Next, you need to go down to the raw output format and choose the raw format that you want. And depending on whether the camera is set to 50i or 60i area, you'll see some different options, ranging from 24 frames per second up to 60 frames per second for the raw output in 4K. If you wish to record 4K RAW at 50 or 60 frames per second, you need to be very careful with your choice of RAW recorder, as many of them can only record RAW 
at up to 30 frames per second. On the Convergent Design Odyssey, you need to go to the Setup page, where you choose the camera and select Sony FS5. You select the FS RAW option, and then in this case we're going to Record RAW, so we choose FS RAW to FS RAW, and the file will be saved as a Cinema DNG file on the SSDs. To allow the camera to trigger the Odyssey to go into Record, we select Record Trigger and set that to Camera. Now the camera will trigger the recorder when you press the Record button on the camera. And that's it, that's all you have to do to be able to record the raw signal on the Odyssey. But you might want to consider adding a LUT on the Odyssey so that you don't have to view the flat and low contrast S-Log2 picture on its screen. To do this, you press and hold the LUT option button on the Odyssey, and that will bring up the LUT menu. Choose the preset LUTs, and then you may need to scroll down one or two pages to see the various Sony LUTs. The LUT that I recommend using with the 7Q is either Sony EE SL2 709A-1 or Sony EE SL2 709A-2. These LUTs deliberately make the on-screen image a little bit darker. The darker on-screen image encourages you to expose that raw data nice and brightly. You can see in the menu that as well as recording raw to raw cinema DNG, the Convergent Design Odyssey can also convert from raw to ProRes. But we'll take a closer look at that type of recording option when we look at the Atomos Shogun. So that was the Convergent Design Odyssey and a few of its raw recording options. As an alternative, let's have a look at how you could record ProRes using an Atomos Shogun, and in this case it's actually an Atomos Shogun flame. On the Shogun, you need to ensure that the source is set to SDI, and you want to set the trigger to Sony, and this will allow the camera to start and stop the recordings on the Shogun. Depending on the options you have in your Shogun, you may be able to choose between different recording codecs. The default codec is Apple ProRes, you can also choose different quality levels for the ProRes from HQ, high quality, to 422 as a medium quality, and LT, which is ProRes Lite, for a slightly lower quality, smaller, compact file. I recommend you use HQ where possible. Initially, you'll be monitoring S-Log2 and S-Gamut. If you press the square yellow button, you'll see we have some different monitor options. If you choose Log to Video, and select Camera Sony, Gamma S-Log2, and S-Gamut, then the S-Log2 is converted to Rec. 709 for monitoring. You still record S-Log2 and S-Gamut, but because you're now monitoring 709, exposure and focus is easier to judge, as the image is more contrasty. If you go to the Custom Look page of the menu, the custom look function on the Shogun allows you to load your own lookup tables into the Shogun and apply those to the S-Log2 picture. You can then either just monitor via that lookup table, or if you choose the Rec Look option, you can record the material with that look already baked into it. Do remember though, if you are baking in a look, you are no longer recording S-Log2 and you may lose some of your post-production flexibility. So as you can see, there are lots of ways of recording the raw stream from the FS5. Exactly what you will be able to record will depend on the recorder that you choose. But in most cases, that's going to allow you to record at least 10-bit, if not 12-bit, and in most cases up to 60 frames per second in full 4K. So it gets around many of the internal limitations of the camera. And for that reason, I think this is a really useful addition to the FS5.